Is the iPhone 12 worth it? No, it is not, at least not brand new from Apple. Why not? It's simple. The value is awful compared to the iPhone 13 and the 13 mini. There is no 12 mini anymore, at least being sold by Apple, so if you want that smaller phone, you're either going to need to turn to the used market or go to the iPhone 13 mini at $600. Now don't buy the small phone purely to save cash. It's much more worth it to add the extra $100 and get the bigger size and bigger battery if you want it. So that warning out of the way, let's break down why the iPhone 12 is awful value. Well, the 12 is $600 with 64 gigabytes of storage. The iPhone 13 is $700 with 128 gigabytes of storage. You're doubling the storage space for an extra $100. Well, what if you want that amount of storage on the iPhone 12? It is cheaper, but it's $650. So now you're looking at only $50 more for a phone that's a full year newer, assuming you want that extra space, which you probably do, and you're ultimately getting a phone with a better chipset, a better battery, a better camera, a smaller notch. You get the idea. It's a better phone. Phone. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91Tech, and it's very, very rare for me to definitively warn people not to buy a particular device. That being said, the iPhone 12 just makes no sense in Apple's current lineup. The iPhone 13, double the storage, $100 more, it's an absolute no-brainer, and if you want a mini phone, then the 13 mini is the same price as the 12, with again, double the storage. So it just ends up putting the iPhone 12 in a weird place. Now, that doesn't mean the iPhone 12 is, by any means, a bad phone, because it's not. It's actually a great phone, and we'll be getting into that, but I definitely wouldn't buy the 12 if the iPhone 13 is also available and not that much more money. But as said, the iPhone 12 is still a great phone, and it'll continue to perform strongly in 2023 and for years onwards. Same goes for the iPhone 12 mini, even if Apple is no longer selling it. So we've got the big answer out of the way. 12 is only worth buying if you find a heck of a deal, and even then, I strongly recommend the iPhone 13. But we're going to talk more about the iPhone 12, the used market, the hardware, the camera, and overall experience, and most importantly, how does the iPhone 12 hold up in 2023? For better or for worse, it's pretty clear why Apple got rid of the 12 mini. And they priced it normally, it would be $500. Only $70 more than the similarly small iPhone SE. And it's a significantly nicer phone, thus causing the cannibalization of their own supposed budget phone sales. Right now, the iPhone 12 is acting as the iPhone 11 did last year in the iPhone lineup, trying to be the low end of the mid-range for iPhone, a more budget-friendly option. And I do use the word budget lightly, as you have to when it comes to Apple. I have reviewed the iPhone 13. It's the phone that I recommend for most people. I think I've made that clear here, but it's still worth emphasizing because, again, it just doesn't make a lot of sense that the iPhone 12 is priced the way it is. If it was $50 cheaper, it'd be a lot more reasonable, but it's not. That being said, when it comes to the used market, I would recommend avoiding the 12 mini in favor of instead the 13 mini, even if you were looking at buying used, because, again, you get double the storage along with other benefits, especially the battery life. It lasts a decent bit longer, which is pretty pretty essential on such small phones. Considering its size, it's impressive the 12 mini does as well as it can for battery life, but any more than light to moderate usage probably will require keeping a charger nearby, especially depending on the device's battery health, which could be starting to get rough now that over two years have passed since launch. All that aside, I was finding the iPhone 12 mini for under $300 on eBay.com, which is surprisingly reasonable. Again, I'd be cautious with buying something like that when it comes to the battery, but if it's a good seller and you're pretty happy with the deal, then it's certainly an option if you really want that smaller phone. The iPhone 12 I was finding for around and even quite a bit under $400 US. Potentially, you could look at local marketplaces. If you find a deal for one of these phones you think is worth going for, don't let me hold you back. Again, these iPhones are fantastic. The iPhone 12, it really is. But when it comes to Apple's lineup, it just doesn't compare very well to its newer, flashier brother. Though, from a design perspective, the phones really aren't too different. The iPhone 12 was the first iPhone to move back to those flat, sharp sides and the classic feel of kind of a boxy iPhone 5. I really love that Apple's been going in this direction with their designs since the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro, and the only notable cosmetic difference from the newer non-Pro iPhones to the iPhone 12 are probably the smaller notch, along with the diagonal camera setup on the back. For colors, we've got a plethora of options, with in particular that darker blue being one of my favorite iPhone colors of all time. It's just gorgeous. It's worth mentioning that I did use the iPhone 12 for a year after it came out, marking the only time I've skipped a Pro model, but the 12 
just didn't feel much different to me from the 12 Pro. The iPhone 12 you see here now is my old one, but it's now being used on the regular by my dad, who wanted an upgrade from his iPhone 10. For him, the standouts seem to be the camera, is quite a bit better, though he does miss the extra two times zoom lens. The phone has been faster for him, actually it's felt quite a bit faster, apparently, but the biggest relief seems to be battery life. The phone will generally last him the day without an issue, and I think that should be the case for most people who also have a healthy battery. It's worth mentioning too, during the workday, he's on his phone probably most of the hours, just dealing with calls and whatnot, and so for the battery to last as long as it does for him is pretty good. What my dad likely hasn't noticed, or in the very least probably doesn't care much about, is the actual design of the phone. At least past the blue color, he does like that. But the flat edges really did serve as a nice fresh shift from the curvy, rounded off frame of the iPhone 6 that lasted all the way to the iPhone 11. You don't have stainless steel, and you're not getting the matte frosted glass finish of the Pro model phones, but that's fine, because what we have here is almost just as great. The glossy glass back and aluminum frame makes for an absolutely premium feel and look. This phone has never felt particularly fragile to me, but it is all glass, and glass definitely breaks, so I wouldn't use the device without a case to be on the safe side. Why use glass if it breaks? For wireless charging, of course. And when you do buy a phone case, you may want to make sure that it's MagSafe compatible. MagSafe is basically just a magnetic circle. The MagSafe charging is the big thing here. You get this little charger that's kind of shaped like a hockey puck, and then bam, you can just snap it onto the back of the iPhone 12. An absolute lifesaver from wireless chargers of old that require finding the sweet spot. Mind you, of course, you have to buy this charger separately because it's Apple, so no surprise. While I still would have liked to see that air power charger that Apple boldly announced three years before the iPhone 12, as someone who's actually used prototype hardware of air power, MagSafe certainly seems more reliable and definitely a lot simpler. Also, probably won't set your house on fire. The iPhone 12 line was also the first line to have 5G networking, so you've got that. When it comes to the front of the iPhone 12, the notch being bigger might feel like a really minor downside versus the iPhone 13 and better, and that's because it is indeed a really minor downside. It's not a big deal, and it's not something you would ever even think about in day-to-day -day life. It's all outweighed anyway by that gorgeous 6.1 inch OLED panel surrounding it. That's right, we've got a beautiful display here, and it's still as breathtaking as ever. Colors are vibrant, the picture is clean and crisp, and you get those true blacks. OLED first came to iPhone 10 in 2017, but the cheaper iPhones continued using the older, less impressive LCD technology right up till the iPhone 11, and then the iPhone 12 went ahead and put in the nicer display finally on the lesser priced options, so that was really good to see. Of course, we can't forget the 5.4 inch iPhone 12 mini. This phone is small, and I mean really small, barely bigger physically than an iPhone 5S, though thanks to the edge-to-edge -edge screen and lack of home button, you can still fit a decent amount of content on the display. The phone is too small for myself, but if you're into this size, again, iPhone 13 mini is a great phone to go for. One nice benefit with that model too is that the notch is smaller. While the notch being bigger on the regular iPhone 12 isn't a big deal, on the smaller 12 mini, the notch does take up a higher percentage of space and thus feels more intrusive. That does make the $600 13 mini a lot nicer in that regard. The iPhone 12 cameras might be aging, but they're still very capable, as are honestly most upper tier smartphones from the last half decade. Photos from these tiny slabs of glass have gotten so darn good that we're absolutely spoiled nowadays. And there's no denying, the iPhone 12 and 12 mini can absolutely take some stellar shots. A lot of these examples are just photos I took throughout my year with the phone before my 13 Pro. And while the 13 Pro was a pretty big upgrade in the camera department, looking back, the iPhone 12 mainly handled things well enough on its own. There is the night mode feature, and it's decent enough, good enough to capture what's happening in the dark for the most part. The ultra wide camera in low light isn't so good, but the main sensor does hold its own. Ideally though, with any smartphone camera, you're going to be taking photos in bright outdoor lighting, which is where the best results are consistently achieved. The ultra wide with adequate lighting also does a really nice job, and it's great to have for the right situation. Video can be filmed in 4K at up to 60 frames per second, and as you would expect with iPhone, it looks absolutely fantastic. The camera is all in all just reliable and consistent to the point where I can pull it out and snap a few photos quickly, you just know that it's doing a good job. The iPhone 12 and 12 mini might be technically inferior to newer iPhones, but let's not forget, these were top of the line only a couple years back. If you're serious about the camera on your iPhone, I strongly recommend going to the iPhone 13, maybe the 13 Pro used, or even the 14 Pro, but the 12 will serve as an upgrade for people on older phones, like my dad from his iPhone 10, even if he does miss the 2 times zoom, rather than the 0.5 times with the ultra wide. This isn't a camera that you would necessarily want to upgrade to, but it's a nice little upgrade along the way. The selfie camera here is 12 megapixels, and it's really good. Honestly, all we need. Enough of my face, thank you. Reeling things back a little bit, taking a bunch of pictures might be good to go on the camera side of things, but the iPhone 12 does only come with 64 gigabytes in the base model. With iCloud storage, that 
that might not be too bad, but going to a higher capacity 128 gigs is certainly worth it, which leaves me again to point you to the iPhone 13 or the 13 mini, but I digress. Talking about those tech specs, the iPhone 12 and 12 mini share the exact same internals with Apple's A14 Bionic chipset and 4 gigabytes of RAM. The phone is still fast and spiffy, giving a smooth and reliable experience without any lag, slowdown, or bumpiness that at least I've noticed on iOS 16. And my dad, who has actually been using this phone for months now, hasn't had any complaints, so that's good to hear coming from an actual everyday average user. Social media, games, web browsing, streaming, whatever you want to do is fully possible on the iPhone 12. It's basically just as capable as even like an iPhone 14 Pro. You might not be getting some of the new fancy features, but the core experience is the same here. And iOS running speedy leaves you free to download and do essentially anything that I could do on my 14 Pro. This isn't a modern flagship anymore, but even then, it's got what makes iPhone so great with a gorgeous design, good camera, and of course, iOS. It's tough to say how many years of updates the 12 will get. Apple seems to give around six years to their phones on average, but with the 12, don't have to think that far ahead. Apple is ridiculous when it comes to software support, and they are still selling the 12 for a reason. They wouldn't be doing so if it was slow or a poor experience in 2023. Maybe it's not quite worth 600 US dollars, but it is an awesome smartphone aside from that. So if you do want to buy the iPhone 12 or 12 mini, we've well established that the 13 is the way to go just because it's more worth it. But what exactly is the iPhone 12 worth? Prices vary wildly, but as talked about earlier, generally the best deals are going to be on the used market if that's something you're comfortable using as it does carry plenty of risk. Turning back to eBay.com again, we mentioned the iPhone 12 mini seems to hover around under $300 or around there. iPhone 12, maybe a hundred bucks more, but under 400. Very reasonable prices for both phones. I don't know if I can ever properly recommend buying a used phone, but I don't think the iPhone 12 is a bad deal whatsoever. And if you want to buy from the used market and find a deal on the 12, I say go for it. If you want to know how it stacks up compared to other used options, in the description is a link to my used iPhone buying guide that goes into all of that. If you're buying new though, which most people tend to do from a carrier or from Apple directly, iPhone 13 mini or the iPhone 13, save yourself the hassle. Just get those phones. It'll be worth it for you in the long run and the short run, really. Too many improvements to ignore for very minimal savings. Ironically, the exact opposite of the iPhone 14 compared to the 13. But with that, I think I'm right about done here. I always liked my iPhone 12, especially the blue, but yeah, I used it for a full year. My dad uses it now. It's working well. It's going strong. Kind of nice to know that it's being used and not just sitting in a drawer somewhere like it was for a while. But yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you have an iPhone 12? iPhone 12 mini? How's your battery life? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. And if you found this video interesting or helpful, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.